Hello, I am Christopher MG from the Greater Bloomington Chamber of Commerce's Success School. This is one of our career videos, and it's my pleasure to have Dave with us. Dave, would you just give us a little bit about you, your employer, your field, your job title? Sure, sure, and thanks for having me. My, my name is Dave Kataka, and I'm a district fisheries biologist for the Indiana Department of Natural Resources, and I work under the Division of Fish and Wildlife is like I said, is a fisheries biologist. And my office is out of the Bloomington Field Office over on 46, just on the east side of Bloomington. So you would, I would I label you as a marine biologist. Would that be correct as far as your profession? Uh, not, not really. I think when you, when you think about marine biologists, you're thinking, I think more of like dolphins and mammals and, you know, whales and seals and stuff. Um, as a freshwater fish biologist, I guess you could call us an ichthyologist. Okay. Um, and in the, in the job that I'm doing, we, we manage uh, sport fish populations. So we're basically, we want to make fishing better for people. And give, me, give us a sense of your duties, your tasks that make fishing better for people. Well, and as a fish management biologist, we, you know, we monitor fish populations. Uh, in particular, the game fish populations. So, in some, you know, we'll do uh, what we call fisheries surveys. We'll go out and collect as many fish as we can um, using methods that only basically we're allowed to use, which is, you know, one of which is an electro fishing boat. We also use gill nets and we use uh, trap nets, which are similar to like a giant minnow trap, but they catch all sorts of fish. You know, we have the advantage of being able to catch fish that aren't hungry. So, yeah, so you have you you catch these fish. What do you what do you do with them then? You, I mean, what uh, what's the next step? There's some great information that you can collect off of these fish, and we do this consistently um, throughout the state and basically the country as well. Uh, we identify species, the fish species that we collect. We measure them. We weigh them. Um, in some cases, we'll take a, a scale sample to age these fish. So we can basically figure out how fast these fish are growing. Um, you know, in really good fisheries, the fish grow fast, um, they get big, and um, they're putting on a lot of weight. So, you know, we consider that, you know, like a balanced fish population. And, and through the collection of multiple species, um, we can determine that based on the data that we collect. And, and, how and since this is sort of a universal, you know, data collection process throughout the, you know, throughout the country, we can compare with other states or compare within lakes in Indiana, north to south. And what, what are some things you've learned along the way? You've had this, you've been in this profession for a while. Correct. Oh, what, what have we learned along the way? Um, <laughs> fast, fast growing fish is good. Uh, invasive species can really um, sort of get in the way of what, what we're trying to achieve in terms of trying to create balanced fisheries for everyone. Um, not everyone likes to catch every species of fish. You know, there's a lot of anglers out there that are specific to bass. They like largemouth bass. And there's other fishermen that like to eat fish. They like to eat bluegill, uh, crappie, red ear, those types of panfish. So we have, you know, we have catch and release guys. We have consumers. And, um, you know, nothing wrong with either one of them in our book. So what sort of action might you take to correct some of these, whether that's uh, some unnecessary species causing the, the, the food chain or whatnot to... Uh... Right, right. And, you know, in, in certain cases, like, uh, you know, for example, like Lake Monroe, it's the biggest lake in the state. It's got 10,755 acres of water. Um, it's a primary water supply for Bloomington. If you get an invasive species in that lake, we can't do anything about it. Um, you can't just drain the lake and start over. You can't, you know, eradicate the fish population because it's, you know, feasibility-wise, it's just out of the realm of possibility with, you know, actually Bloomington wouldn't have any water. So, you know, it, it, there's stuff like that. In, in smaller impoundments, we've gone to extreme cases where we've drained the lake down, eradicated the fish population, basically just started over. And a good example of that is West Boggs. I don't know if anyone, uh, you know, if you're familiar with that lake, um, 
we renovated that fishery in 2014 and um, we're evaluating it right now with a, what we call a creel survey. I've hired a fellow to um, interview fishermen on the boat ramp from March to October. And we're getting some really great information about usage, uh, what people are targeting. Um, you know, we can go out there and do a, collect a lot of fish using methods that no one basically can. not So it's always, you know, as part of a whole survey, it's nice to know what the anglers are catching and what they want to catch and what they want to target. And, that, and then we can compare that with what we caught and we can determine if this is, you know, the direction we want to go in terms of what we want to manage. So Dave, how did you end up where you're at now? I'm going to call you a freshwater biologist. Um, um, is, did it start with a love of, of fishing or what wouldn't, what, give me a, give us a sense of how, how you ended up here. It's, it's a, it's a, I wouldn't call it a unique story, but these days it might be, you know, I started out uh, really, you know, no one in my family really fished, but my neighbor did. And my best friend, his dad took us out fishing. So we really started fishing because my, uh, my best friend's dad took us out. Um, and as I, you know, fished some more, um, as we got into determining where I wanted to go to school, I still like to fish. And um, um, when I, when I took a, a visit to Northland College in northern Wisconsin, it's right on the shore of Lake Superior. Um, you know, that's some, you know, just some fantastic country. It's just so different than Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yes. Is what it comes down to. And, um, you know, I spent four years up there. It was a, it's a liberal arts college. I got my bachelor's in biology and just saw some really cool things that really sparked your interest. So, um, it's a different mindset, you know, when you go fishing and learn how to fish, you, de you, you determine that, you know, in order to catch fish, sometimes you need to go places where other people aren't. And there's certain environments that are more conducive to catching better fish or fishing better. And, and that's just sort of the mindset that I've gone through. Uh, even through college, I learned how to hunt. And, and the same thing follows, you know, you can't hunt, you know, in the city, you have to go out in the country, you have to go to the marshes, you have to go to the woods. So that's the type of the, you know, the areas that I really started to gain a passion for and, and you know, migrate to. So it was when I got my first job in Indiana as a summer aide, which is a, you know, summertime position, you're hired to help the biologists out or help the hatchery manager out. I started as a, uh, as a hatchery laborer and I helped raise fish. I also, with that job, I also mowed grass. We built things, you know, we cleaned things. And then I actually got picked up after two summers and worked there full time raising, oh, different species like muskie, uh, walleye, hybrid striped bass, largemouth bass and channel catfish. You know, and then as things progressed, uh, I found, I moved over to fish management about five years later and got a job up in Northern Indiana out of the Columbia city office, which is up near Fort Wayne. And um, that's when I really, I really started to get into working with fish surveys, fish management and, um, you know, and habitat management, you know, aquatic vegetation, uh, permitting that type of thing. So, um, and then in 2004, a district opened up, um, out of the Avoca office, which is down in Bedford, which is the district that I'm currently in right now. And I've basically been here ever since. So, What, what are some misconceptions about your job that people might have or some things that they might not know? Well, DNR stands for Department of Natural Resources. And uh, in general, when people, when you say you work for the DNR, they they automatically think that you're a conservation officer, you carry a gun and you arrest people. Um, the Department of Natural Resources has many divisions, one of which is law enforcement. Um, and the division that I work for is um, Division of Fish and Wildlife. So as a fish biologist, you know, we look at, you know, fish populations, sport fish populations, and uh, we set regulations. We come up with regulations, say, you know, maybe we want to have a size limit on black crappie. 
Um, we determine that, you know, through data and so the scientific process that this will be a good fit for this lake or this species and law enforcement uh, basically enforces those regulations. So. What are some of the challenges that, you know, that we're looking for the Department of Natural Resources when it comes to both the department and your position specifically? Uh, I guess, you know, some of the biggest challenges are is, um, you know, you, you, you come out of school with a four-year degree and you automatically think that, you know, you're worth a little bit more, you should get paid more. Um, reality is in resource management, they're not very, you know, they're, they're not probably, you know, in working for state government, you're probably not going to make the same amount as someone with the same degree, possibly working in the private sector. You know, you're working for a government entity. Um, there are benefits in terms of, you know, good health care, cheaper health care, but at the same token, you're not getting paid very, you're not getting paid as, you know, as much as, you know, maybe someone in the private sector with the same degree. Um, in terms of fish and wildlife management, you know, there's so many um, um, distractions, so to speak, or different options for kids to do these days. Fishing and hunting is starting to uh, decline. We're having, we're seeing trends of um, lower license sales for fishing and hunting. And, you know, that's our primary funding source. So, and uh, when you talk about uh, what they call the North American wildlife model, you know, basically hunters and anglers or fishermen pay for the management of that resource. Um, and really there's not much, you know, when you start to think about other types of resource management, uh, water quality, good habitat for non-game species, um, that funding is is not very, you know, that's basically dependent on donations and, and small grants. Whereas the Fish and Wildlife Fund, um, that's a byproduct of managing sport fish is, is good water quality and, you know, additional fishing opportunities, which also benefit fish that aren't targeted by people. So, and same goes for wildlife. So any, uh, any advice you would give somebody who's sort of interested in this field? Is there any volunteer opportunities, uh, any way to get kind of a sense of uh, what you do or just in the Department of Natural Resources in general? Because this is, I, I'm thinking right. state in the, the state employment that is geared in your department. Right, right. You know, that's a tough, that's a tough thing these days. Um, um, you know, and, and opportunities. We actually have a, a place on our website, on the Department of Natural Resources website that you can um, do a search on and find different, you know, volunteer opportunities. Um, we have a summer aid program or what we call a naturalist aid. And that's, you know, there's a lot of people, old timers like me, that that's the way we started. Um, it's a, we hire, we generally hire kids that are in college in biological or resource related fields. They work with the biologist all summer long. Um, they do the same things we do. And, um, you know, it's a great, great way to gain experience. Um, and the reality is some of the stuff we do is not fun. It's not pleasant and sort of gross at times. And uh, if that really doesn't appeal to you, you want to find that out before you commit to the next three years of school or next, you know, two or three years of schools anyway, college. So um, there is opportunities there. And, you know, and, and the reality is, you know, you can, all the district biologists are on the website, their phone numbers and email addresses. If you already have any questions, you know, and that's one of those challenges that, um, you know, our numbers are out there, you know, contact us. If you have a fishing question or you want to know better fishing or you have just some biological questions, we can either find it or, you know, help you find it. You know, it's just one of those things. We get a lot of people that, you know, get their information from the coffee shop or the bait shop or, you know, just sitting around the TV watching fishing shows. So um, we're a good source of information and we like to talk about it. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to call us. All right, Dave, any, anything else? Any, any other parting shots, uh, final words before we go? Uh, no, it's just, you know, with this COVID, 
uh, pandemic, we've had a lot of people um, enjoying the outside. I mean, you know, basically you can't go and bowl, you can't go bowling, you can't go to the movies, you can't go out for dinner very well. Um, we have noticed a huge increase in license sales and activity on our boat ramps and activities at the park and everything like that. And we just hope that, you know, when things go back to normal again, people don't forget, you know, fishing's fun. It's not that expensive. And it just opens up so many more, you know, doors or opportunities for you to, to learn different things. Just, just, you know, appreciate what you have out there. All right. Well, Dave, hey, thank you very much. Department of Natural Resources, natural water biologist. Uh, appreciate your time today. Uh, everybody else, take care. We'll see you next time here at the Success School.